okay, we can puff and piece them together. What I'm using here is what they would call F4 tape in the military, but it's actually just standard electrical tape that you use for kernies or things of that nature that you can buy from any electrical store um, for doing high voltage or lugs. You put it on. This will only stick to itself, but you have to put normal electrical tape over top of it to hold it in place or a zip tie because it will come unraveled after a short time. I don't have enough room to put my tape in between here and here, so bring some more. Putting this on here protects this from coming loose. And that portion's done. And then I use a zip tie. Give me. And the zip tie is there to hold everything nice and secure. It's the size I have, so it's what's gonna get it's what's gonna get put on here. Um, <laughs> normally I would use a smaller one. And yes, I do know the twist method with Lyman pliers and things of that nature. I just don't know where my Lyman pliers are. So I'm doing with what I can do. But this is uh it's very thick material. It's like a rubber material, it's slightly sticky, but not by much, but it's very thick. This is good up to well, extreme high voltage. It's used for electrical kernies and things of that nature, but when you stretch it, it gets warm. So it forms and bonds to itself very easily. It's very similar to F4 tape in the military, except it doesn't get as hot as F4 tape does. F4 tape gets extremely hot because it actually has a green line in the middle of the orange tape that's in it. You military guys, for working aircraft maintenance, you know what I'm talking about. But it that gets hot because it's a, like an epoxy. It has a reaction when you stretch it, like a typical epoxy reaction. But and guys, if you do know what he's talking about, please put respond. A, put a comment down. Yeah, would love to say, hear from you. Say welcome to all my fellow crew chiefs out there. It's been a minute since I've been out of the military, but... Yeah, look at that beard. Yep. Enjoying this. Also, this nasty old haircut. I'm all poofy. <laughs> it's been a good minute since I've been out of the military, but it's it's okay. It's always in your blood. Yep. Well, that and, you know, tet tetanus, anthrax, all that good stuff. That's all in there, too. Yeah. So... But again, we're going to be using another zip tie now that I've got the vinyl tape across the top of it to keep everything intact. It's like everybody's got different methods of doing things. I'm just trying to be as safe as possible when it comes to any electrical connections. And back here in this area, we are going to be securing this to here with a zip tie in this area. But we're also going to be securing this with a zip tie just to keep the tape on. That's all it's there for. It just keeps the tape on. He's trying to protect his daughter and his grandbabies. Yes, I am. I'm sorry, but um, their lives are more important to me than mine are. <sighs> so I've already replaced the brakes and all kinds of stuff on this vehicle. Tires. Tires. Got four tires for her and got two tires for you. Yeah. I wonder who you're more worried about. I'm worried about my grandkids. <laughs> Can't blame you there. But we're going to be putting this in here just for fuel pump fuse. Check. Eh. Okay. There's that. And a minute ago, there's something y'all didn't see. I was putting this nut on. And I touched between this nut and here. Right there. And it made a nice sparky arky as you see there, and it scared Tina to death. Yeah, I screamed and used a couple of choice words. Yeah, so it would have been beeped out anyway, guys, because of the, some of the language she was using. And, you know, okay, I cuss like a sailor, let's be honest. Cuss enough to make a sailor blush. True. Okay, now we're going to try this again once I make sure all my tools are out of the way and won't fall in the engine compartment. Because I don't want that to happen. Do you want me to start it up? Uh, I'll do it. I just want to listen to see if everything's right. Uh, you need something. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. 
skin. Mine. Well, actually, Sierra's. Yeah. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Hey, the radio's making noise. That can die. The radio didn't make noise earlier. Huh? The radio didn't make noise earlier. Uh, the radio made noise earlier. Uh, it did, but I had it turned off. Oh. Uh, okay. It's running. The fuel pump is running. Everything's running. It seems going. like it's running quieter. Yeah. This is no longer warm. This is no longer getting warm. Okay. I'm going to do an amp check on here. For those of you that don't know what an amp draw check is, you have your multimeter, you put an amp. This is AC voltage. This is AC volt, or this is AC for amp draw. This is a voltage for AC. This is voltage for DC. I can check voltage or I can check amp draw. I'm not sure if this meter will actually check amp draw in DC, but we're gonna find out. I am running at 0.37.36 amps, as you see. It's nice and pretty, it's right through the center line, nice and stable, we're doing good. 0.37 amps at 12 volts, and you can figure out what your resistance is, and you can also figure out what your wattage is if you were dealing with something like a light bulb. So. If you want to do math, but who wants to do math? Yeah, I have all this wrote down, you know, P, I, E, E, I, R, all A, these stupid, B, C. you know, you got all these formulas to figuring these things out. E is voltage, I is amp draw, R is resistance, and P is power or wattage for all those that want to know what it is. But you can look this stuff up on the internet and do Google searches if you ever need to figure it out. Alternator is producing. The alternator is producing uh, 2.8 amps, 2.9 amps, 2.11. It's changing. So it's actually producing some amp draw going through this. Is that where it's supposed to be at? Well, this is here, but if I check the amp draw like on the starter, uh -huh. right here, I shouldn't be receiving hardly anything. And I'm not receiving anything because it's not currently being used. Okay. So that's a good thing that you're it's not It's a good seeing. thing. So I know how much amp draw is being pulled currently or okay. being produced currently. I cannot check what's being produced going to that because I have a lot of wires in this loop right here. Right. If I try to check that, if, you know, depending on if there's more than one wire in there, right now it's pulling 1.4, 1.3 amps. Getting pulled away from the battery, getting sent inside. The fuel pump itself is running on 0.37 amps, 0.36 amps. And the alternator is actually producing voltage, sending it back to the battery at 2.5 amps, 2.3 amps roughly. So it's producing enough voltage to actually charge the battery, or amp draw to actually charge the battery, based on where it's currently setting from being charging for 15 to 20 amps. Negative side, if I check it, I'm in hold mode right now. So if I check it on this, if you look at that, that's telling me right now that any back feet from this is like 1.1 amps. You can't really do an amp draw check on a negative terminal on DC. On AC, it's more reasonable. But it's on AC. It's on AC because it's when it's setting. But that's what I'm saying. On a neck on AC circuits, you can check your common or your ground. Ground, you're not going to receive any amp draw check on it on the ground on an AC circuit. But on a DC circuit, you will because that's your neutral uh, okay. terminal. But it's not correct. Like 1.5, 1.4 on that one. This one, 1.2, 1.14, it just, it, it varies. Uh, for voltage, DC, like if I clip this on here, it won't show me anything. 
Right. Because it can't. I check between here and here. You see what my voltage is? It's a 14.14 volts. So the alternator is producing its voltage. This is no longer warm. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. So. So does that mean we need to stop the vehicle and check the voltage of the battery again? Because it was going down before. Uh, that would be a good move to do. Yes, we can do that. Hopefully I don't electrocute anybody this time. This is just me disconnecting the ground. I found my millimeter wrenches, guys. And They're, they were where I said they were. Yes, they are. Uh, I just forgot that I actually own them. Yeah, it's been many, many years since you've had to do anything with them. Yeah, um, but it's just one of those things of, I don't feel like digging them out cleaning them and wiping them down like this. I'll have to do it eventually. Our big red van is used for storage because there's something wrong with it. Okay, so we're running pretty good on that portion now. Let me get my leads out of the way so you can actually see what we're, go we're doing here. We are in DC voltage, battery voltage, only the battery. Raising or lowering? It's lowering. Is it slower or faster? I think it's a little bit slower, but it, it's it, like it's went from pretty much 12.7 to 12.63. So it's slowly dropping. Two. So we're slowly dropping, which means my battery is done, but it may have a parasitic draw somewhere on this, but I can't find it right now. But with this being disconnected, a parasitic draw should not affect it because my alternator is producing. So the does voltage. this mean that she needs to come out here even if she's not driving and start it at least once a day and run it for just a few? Uh, a trickle charger will do the best. Okay. Just to maintain this battery because whenever I replace this battery, it did not have a hold down bracket or anything else in there. I had to steal one off the other vehicles in order to do so. Um, but this battery is also probably gotten overheated from a little bit of a short on this. There's possibly another short somewhere on the vehicle that I haven't found yet. But this is, this is what happens, guys, when you buy vehicles or you're having to work on someone else's vehicle and you're very unfamiliar with it. I am not familiar with Ford vehicles hardly at all. I am more familiar with Chevrolets and Toyotas. Occasionally, I'm also familiar with Dodge because I used to work for a Dodge dealership. Um, oh, that was a long time ago. Yes, it was. Um, but that was I'm more familiar with Chevrolets because I'm, you know, my family has owned Chevrolets for yeah, uh, the most amount of time, my whole life. You realize the Dodge dealership was before military? Yes, I remember. We old. It's just you. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but right now I've done all I can do to this. Um, whenever we get ready to start working on it and finding anything else on it for parasitic draw, if the battery goes dead again, we'll let you know. But I'm going to let it charge for a little while. Every, all the terminal ends and all these little pieces are clean. This has been replaced. We got rid of this very crappy one that's actually kind of melted in this area. You can see where the zip tie was and how it's actually impressed in on it. Yeah. And it's melted from the resistance that was in here. And that lost everything. All because of an improper crimp. Well, let me see if I can get it. That's a... why in force that. See the wire. Keeps blowing. Because I guarantee you what happened is they had this in here and then the fuse for the fuel pump blew. So they removed the 10 amp fuse from it and they installed a 30 amp fuse 
because it wouldn't blow this. Which means this now became your fuse, this wire. Good way to start a fire, maybe? Yes, it's definitely a good way to start a fire. That's why you, even in your house with your circuit breakers. This, your wire size, is what determines your fuse size. If you have 10 gauge wire, well, if it's standard Romex wire, which is that flat wire that's yellow or white or orange, if it's 10 gauge wire, on that type of wire, do not exceed 25, 20 to 25 amps on it. If it's single strand wire, like this type of wire, you know, just, you know, style of wire, and it happens to have some numbers on the outside of it, it says THHN, which indicates a different type of wire, it's good at 600 volts, that 10 gauge wire is good up to 30 amps, but it has to be ran through a conduit. So, the main point of being is safety, try to figure out what's going on. So whenever, if y'all have any questions or anything, please let us know. But when it comes to, like, me hammering on top of this terminal to get this thing on here, I'm doing it very lightly. I'm taking it upon myself to do so. I don't recommend hammering up the battery. It's a good way to destroy a battery. But this is personal and family vehicles. I do what I can do to get them up the door. And you gotta do what you gotta do. We're trying to live more frugal and start a homestead style life for ourselves, for our future, for our kids' futures, and for our grandbabies' futures, and hopefully even past that. Exactly. So, you do what you can do. I know it's not good to do so, but I know I'm probably going to get some comments from mechanics out there telling me I'm doing things wrong. You've learned your ways, I've learned my ways. We all do what we can do. As long as the outcome is the same, who cares what path to get there? 